Hello everyone, I am Pratik, currently working as a cyber security intern at Cyber Sapiens. Today I will be talking about the no rate limiting vulnerability, how it exactly works, what are all the methods to find this vulnerability, what are all the dangers that is the impact and the mitigation process, how to avoid this vulner vulnerability. And finally, I'll be concluding this presentation by demonstrating a practical live demo of uh, me testing a website for this exact vulnerability. So what do you mean by rate limiting? Rate limiting is a security control which ensures that the number of requests coming from a particular source doesn't exceed the optimal request per minute. Here the request refers to HTTP request. A HTTP, is, a HTTP request is made whenever we click on a functionality. For example, when we enter our credentials and click on to login, there is a HTTP request being made in the background and sent to the server. The optimal request per minute means how many requests a user can or is able to send. For example, if I am logging in and I forgot the password and I am just trying to recover the password and I am attempting to enter the correct credential. So in that process, I enter some wrong attempts. But if you think logically, these wrong attempts could mean that I am trying maybe one try per second. Like maybe I am trying to log in for one try per second. This is a very possible scenario. So one try, one try means one request per second, which means that there is a particular limit to which a normal user can request to. For example, if I'm logging in, I can't send 100 requests in a second. That's not at all possible by a normal human being, a normal user using a website. That is called the optimal request per minute. The request per minute uh, for which a normal user is able to send. The rate limiting vulnerability occurs when this is completely uh, not being uh, stopped. Uh, for example, if I use an automated tool or uh, if I am trying to you know, maliciously guess the password of someone else's account, then I'll be attempting to send more requests than the optimal request per minute. So I won't be sending like one request per second. I'll be, I, I can create a malicious payload uh, which uh, is able to send more than even 100 requests per second. So that kind of activity means that, that kind of activity means one of the following brute force login credentials which means a hacker is trying to brute force the possible credentials and try to gain the victim's account. 2FA two factor authentication code or CAPTCHA bypass. This is also possible through uh, this vulnerability because if there is no rate limit for this, if I am able to send 100 requests in a second or if I am able to send like uh, many a request than the optimal request which I talked about then uh, the vulnerability can cause such uh, impact to take place such impact by such impact I mean brute force login credentials two-factor authentication code bypass captcha bypass username enumeration I can basically enumerate whether there are a valid users or not DDoS and distributed denial of service DOS attack these attacks are very very critical attacks uh, because it leads to uh, some of the uh, attack leads to even account takeover and the DOS attack is the most destructive because it just stops the service of the web, web server completely. So moving ahead, the vulnerability description. No rate limiting vulnerability occurs when there is no restriction in place for limiting the amount of requests sent by an user or blocking suspicious activity. So as we discussed in the before slide, 
if there is no restrictions in how many users how many sorry how many in how many request a user can send that is the optimal uh, request per minute then the no rate limiting vulnerability is present there should be some uh, logic or code which should monitor request based on the source ip address and uh, basically check if the request is made completely by a human that com that is completely by a normal user uh, which means that the normal user can send only a few requests per second but some tools or some payloads if we craft the uh, payload uh, in a particular way we can send many requests so if some tool is being used then the security measure should be that the uh, request should be checked and the tool uh, or the uh, uh, whatever the source which is sending so many requests should be completely blocked here an attacker can take advantage and perform various attacks like we discussed earlier yeah like we discussed brute force 2fa bypass and all this is completely possible with no rate limiting vulnerability because there's no restriction at all in place and i can send so many requests and all in this server this leads to critical impact like account takeover broken access control data mining two factor authentication and extra and etc this is completely possible because uh, uh, brute force if you think about brute force attack i can basically give so many i can test so many credentials and keep sending requests so many requests per uh, minute i can just keep on sending keep on uh, keeping a dot running it for so many so much time and the web server won't even realize it or maybe if they realize it will be so late for them till i compromise so many victims account so that's what a malicious hacker would would think any number of request in quick succession should be either blocked or rate limited if not then it could cause a critical impact so i guess this is now clear for you we'll go on so methods for testing this vulnerability so these are the um, short and very to the point steps for finding out no rate limiting vulnerability first find functionalities for testing on the target site this is very important because using the functionality you will be able to create an impact for example if i find no rate limiting on login endpoint which it means that i can literally brute force perform brute force attack and guess so many victim credentials if it occurs on forgot password at per field it means that i can i can keep uh, spamming the uh, emails of various users or just keep sending more requests there are many types of imp uh, different types of uh, impact relating to different functionalities so in 2fa code i can bypass the two factor authentication and completely take over anyone's account like this first find some functionalities to play around with think it think it like what if you are able to send so many request in this on this endpoint and what will it cost Th always think about the impact if you think about the impact you will get the uh, vulnerability you will get the vulnerability to be more critical and uh, many times what happens is uh, many people while testing don't think about the impact and just blindly uh, send request to a page and for example uh, uh, if you send many requests to the home page and you are uh, you are not being blocked that does not mean that the vulnerability has any impact because it's just on the home page and just you are able to refresh the home page so many times just by doing that it doesn't mean that you, you can compromise anyone's account or you can perform any impact but if you find it on login like you are entering credentials and if you finding it on login endpoint it means that you can brute you can uh, potentially perform brute force attacks and this will have a higher impact so the second step is use both the intended way and the unintended way in combination to confirm the vulnerability 
So the first is to find many functionalities uh, related to user login, forgot password, two-factor authentication. It can be like this. The intended way is send normal wrong login attempts and notice the response. Simply uh, without any, don't use any tool. Maybe uh, Burp Suite is very, very useful in this because Burp Suite can capture the request and you can play the request in the repeater and modify and do whatever you like. Just uh, use that, use the repeater tool in Burp Suite, capture the uh, login attempts or whatever it may be relating to your uh, functionality. For example, if 2FA functionality is there, then the, the login endpoint won't be used. The two-factor endpoint will, will be used. Just try to send any wrong attempts. For example, in two-factor authentication, you can try to send the wrong uh, two-factor authentication code. Just send it a couple of times uh, rapidly. Like, just keep sending it, keep sending it uh, till till a minute or uh, till a minute uh, would be very long, I guess. You can just try to keep sending it for 10 seconds because what what is the case is in today's uh, um, websites the if there is rate limiting protection it will be known if if you send keep sending it under 10 seconds if you keep sending it sending this request in 10 seconds and you are not being blocked at all or not being rate limited at all which means that there is uh, there is potentially no rate limiting so you try for this the uh, intended way the unintended unintended way is test whether the server has rate limiting protection or not this can be done by sending many potential login attempts in a short span of time for example 100 login attempts in a minute use verbs for effective testing so the intended way is find uh, giving wrong attempts and noticing the response whether or not you are being rate limited or not for those wrong response the unintended way is you are literally trying to brute force it you are giving some guessing some random credentials try to guess some random credentials using the uh, endpoint and uh, for this burp suit can be a very effective tool in testing because you can uh, bring the request in the repeater tab and play along with the request so uh, let me sub it up first is finding functionalities like login forgot password or two-factor authentication then use the word unintended way and intended way the intended way is send wrong login attempts which means wrong attempts and notice the response send the wrong attempts in a short span of time within 10 seconds just keep sending the same request again and again and watch whether you are being blocked or not. The unintended way is test whether the server has rate limiting protection or not by sending many potential attempts. Say, may, for example, in the two-factor authentication case, by you can just use the intruder tool and uh, in the payload section, just upload uh, potential uh, potential two-factor authentication codes and uh, th there is a, a setting for uh, specifying how many requests you want and or based on the payload the request can be automatically set so if you do that and send it and you are not being rate limited or uh, you are not being uh, stopped at all you are not receiving any error codes then it is completely uh, all right which means that the no rate limiting no rate limiting vulnerability is present so the conclusion is that if you don't receive any ip ban error and all the 100 requests either get the response of that in intended way or get a successful login response it is a no rate limiting vulnerability because there is literally no rate limiting security measure present then you can confirm that the target site is vulnerable leading to account takeover using brute force attack due to no rate limiting protection always look for ways to perform attacks like brute force or test out whether rate limiting protection is present or not in many cases the rate limiting 
protection you can confirm it by after after you send so many continuous requests if the website has rate limiting protection you may receive some requests like you may receive some response like 429 too many requests being said sent you are being rate limited you are being blocked for temporarily if uh, something some responses like these are being shown this means that uh, rate limiting protection is on place and there is no vulnerability present if if the, that is not shown and you are able to send the same request again and again then there may be a vulnerability and you may be able to take advantage of it proving some impact so the final topic is impact what dangers this vulnerability brings to a website or a organization the impact of this vulnerability is brute force because it can literally brute force for so many requests and guess pot possible attempts even guess possible login credentials or possible two factor authentication codes which is very dangerous second is otp bypass yeah this is also very much possible uh, this this is possible using the brute force attack privilege escalation because there may be some admin account on a website which um, for which the password can also be brute force and uh, privilege escalation is also very much possible the fourth one is authentication bypass authentication bypass in the sense there are very there are many uh, authentication mechanisms for example consider no rate limiting mechanism itself uh, rate limiting mechanism the rate limiting mechanism uh, prevents the user from sending more than the optimal requests per minute so if this is being this can be bypassed the uh, uh, rate limiting vulnerability the rate limiting vulnerability can be can be exploited data theft data theft it, data data theft is also possible because rate limiting is solely based on uh, guessing and brute forcing you can literally get so many uh, possible credentials which can lead to mass data theft also data mining data mining is mainly uh, mainly means crawling because there are many crawlers which crawl the website and get valuable information from the website can keep and just keep monitoring the website for any changes or so so data mining is also possible denial of serving service is a very um, critical impact vulnerability because it literally um, stops the web server from even serving any request at all and overwhelms the web server username enumeration this is not considered a high high or a critical vulnerability it's a very low well impact because you can guess the valid usernames on a particular website uh, but this is also impact of it so yes chain other vulnerabilities this is very much possible because vulnerabilities can be chained together many vulnerability like vulnerabilities like sql injection cross site scripting it can be chained with no rate limiting and it can be even escalated to a with more higher attack more higher critical impact like uh, uh, mass data being uh, leaked due to sql injection and many more finally the mitigation process for uh, mitigation there are a couple of ways account locking after certain limits of requests with a short time span so account locking means locking the uh, account based on the ip address or based on the uh, uh, based on some cookie value and uh, temporarily just blocking out the user from even attempting to uh, continue the continue to request further second one is api limiting limiting request per minute so the api api endpoints 
mainly these endpoints need uh, rate limiting protection because these endpoints will be used vastly compared to other endpoints. These endpoints are the middleware for which the data is being transferred. So rate limiting request per minute should be limited for the API endpoint specifically. And third one is proper CAPTCHA and OTP authentication. That should be properly implemented uh, CAPTCHA. CAPTCHA meaning Google CAPTCHA which uh, completely stops rate limiting by asking a CAPTCHA or a challenge uh, to be solved. Only when the challenge is solved, the request is being allowed to move further. The last mitigation method is to use X rate limiting HTTP response header. This is a browser mechanism and a response header which prevents rate limiting because this can be uh, given a value of uh, some request per second, request per second or request per minute from the web server. And based on the value, the browser uh, will fix the, the amount of uh, requests that can be sent from our browser. Thank you. So now we will be moving on to the live practical demo session. So here is the practical demo of no rate limiting vulnerability. So this practical demo will be performed on this open source website which allows testing for vulnerabilities. This is Altero Mutual Testfire.net, Altero Testfire.net. So I have my work suit on right here and just click on the pro proxy proxy tool to configure the proxy and if I basically send some requests like this I can get it in the history the exact request and the response. Now uh, the first step to find any vulnerability any no rate limiting vulnerability is to find functionalities. For example, here I can see a sign in functionality which takes username and password fields. And let's see what the shift do. So I'm basically entering some test credentials just to check out what does it do. Just say login fail, we are sorry about the username and password. Okay. So, this exact request, the post request to do login do login takes in you my name the username and the password field and gives out the response 302 to login.jsp again so we are being redirected login again with the error code here click control r or right click to and click and send to repeater i can get this request in repeater the first step is the intended way the intended way is sending wrong credentials again and again n number of times and checking whether the website has a protection in place. So if I just keep clicking on send again and again very rapidly for about like 5 to 10 seconds, this behavior should not happen. It should not give me a normal response code like this. These um, rapid n number of time is not the optimal request per minute so this sh this should be blocked i i should i should be blocked from requesting more from the web server but i am not in this case i am not being blocked at all you can confirm it by sending it to the intruder tool right click and send to intruder and in the payloads section just click payload type as null payloads. Now we will be able to generate n number of payloads as, as much as we like without modifying the request at all. So if I uh, just keep 200 for example and start the attack, you can see the exact response of 302 found, 302 found, 302 found is being displayed over and over again and I am not at all being rate limited or blocked at all. And I'm able to uh, request as a normal user for n number of times. So this is a no rate limiting vulnerability. You can just stop here and uh, show the uh, impact through brute force attack. Like you can basically uh, go to the question click sniper and yeah, in the payload section, 
just click simple list and just give some random credential which you think might be the correct credential according to my guess there may be an admin account so i'll try to guess the password of the admin you can click on the password value and add click add to add it to the payload stack now whatever payload i give each request will be replaced each request will replace the password value and send a fresh request so for example i think this may be the password or uh, this may be the password or this may be the password and a number of possibilities so i'm just giving a simple this is a simple proof of concept actually you see here the cookie value is being the length is different than the others and the for admin as the password and getting a cookie value session cookie value which means that there is an admin user and i have actually taken over the account this is just five requests but in a real case scenario you would be giving thousands and lakhs of passwords in order to guess the correct password for the admin maybe they have a very strong password or maybe they have a very weak ones which is already been breached so this can be tested out with this vulnerability i can just keep on guessing guess, guessing the correct password and finally brute force the admin account so this is how you can show a proof of concept to the uh, company which is submitting the vulnerability to and this is basically no rate limiting vulnerability because i should be stopped from requesting more and more requests again but in my case i am not at all being rate limited and the requests are uh passing through again and again and i'm getting a valid response the uh, i'll just show you an example of what a rate limiting uh example how does a website use rate limiting so if i go here in the moonpick.com this is a example website and uh, just a second i'll try to come to login so yeah, here it's asking for an email let's just put test at test and if in the request part the post auth account lookup is taking the value test dot test so right click and send to repeater so actually repeater tab is not repeater tab i can just keep sending on for a normal proof of concept and check whether this contains rate limiting as you can see here after few trials in just few seconds i'm getting 4 to 9 too many requests and i'm just being rate limited by cloudflare if you look at this you are being rate limited and i'm being banned temporarily this is a very good protection and and this should be the standard for every website if if this if if n number of requests are allowed i may be able to enumerate many valid usernames and this could lead to a username enumeration vulnerability so that's it for the practical part i hope you all must have understand the fundamental concept of rate limiting and how to test for it and uh, yes that's my end thank you